so <laughs> we're doing a little bit of electrical today one of the things that we're doing is we're putting a bathroom light so this baby has 500 lumens which is the new way of measuring how much light a uh, device puts out it's LED and it's um, about six watts I think it is and we're also putting a USB uh, 12 volt outlet connector in the bedroom area well we got one for everybody's bedroom I wanted to see basically how these things behave so one of the things we did was follow me to the bathroom so the big light that was up here I already removed I left the little caps on so that nobody gets shocked even though it's 12 volts so it's a great way to test these kind of things so when I looked at this it has a little light in here so it's a good thing to know because since these 12 volt DC and USB outlets is going to be right by your head I want to see that light <laughs> before I install this thing all the way because if it's too bright I want to make sure that it's not pointing at the person's face when they're asleep the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to basically just partially connect it up here there and there you go that's the blue light that's going to be shining it's just one of those considerations in a small space that can become really aggravating after a while especially if you don't like blue light of all things right right in your eyes so something to consider when we're putting this in everybody's within everybody's reach in the bunks and the beds the other one I wanted to test is this one I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna put this in and just see just how bright this gets oh, why is it not coming on oh well hopefully I didn't fry it I had it on backwards oh well, that's not good well they confuse the heck out of you with these things they're they're wiring with house colors Oh. instead of DC colors DC versus oh. 115 there it is <laughs> so that's 500 looms that one lumens hey that's a good one for over the uh, mirror right I love that once you have a little piece a couple of little pieces of wire uh, where 12 volt is coming out it's a great little spot to test DC units most D DC devices are now coming with black and white traditionally DC is black and red when it's black and red the red is positive just like in your car when it's black and white the black is positive just like in your house when it's AC clears mud that's clear as day man <laughs> so when it's black and red the black is negative when it's black and white the black is positive easy wheezy way to <laughs> wire things backwards I think I don't know it's just something you have to know uh, first if it's DC then if it's color-coded this way and then if it's coming out of the wall white is 99% of the time the return or the ground if it's DC or AC and any color wire is your positive and with a voltmeter you can tell the voltage anyway not necessarily a how-to but I figure I'd throw some knowledge your way just in case it's useful and somehow yeah chuck this to just one more thing of identifying wires sometimes the wires coming out are the same color and you can't tell which one's positive and which one's negative in a DC system you gotta make sure you hook up the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative so this is a, a good way to tell or the only way I know <laughs> to tell which one's positive and which one's negative besides going back all the way to the source so you don't want to do that a couple of tools you're gonna to need um, well you don't need a wire stripper but I've been doing this for a long time and a wire stripper saves me big time and a voltmeter I have one of these digital voltmeters It's the easiest one uh, to read that you can get I don't recommend an analog <laughs> So if you have wires that are the same, what you want to do is expose some of the wire so that you can measure it with a voltmeter. So I like my little trusty stripper. Makes it so much easier than sitting here with a razor blade uh, trying to figure out not to cut the, the metal wire underneath. So now that you have the exposed wire, 
what you do is you grab your voltmeter and you just put it on whatever you can. I have these little nifty uh, leads that have a little hook on the end. <laughs> Again, it helps you, it gives you like an extra hand. So what I do is I just hook it onto the end. Just basically keep track of which one you put the positive. Positive is red, negative is black. And keep track of which ones you put the positive and the negative on. And then you put power on it. If it reads a negative voltage, it means that the leads are reversed. Meaning you have the positive hooked up to the negative. So go ahead and switch them around and then test the voltage again. And as soon as you read positive, that means that you have the leads identified. That's the positive and that's the negative. Did I do that okay? I don't know I how think so. I think it. it sounds really good. All right. Here I am working without my glasses. <laughs> I'm gonna cut my finger off again. Mm -hmm. I already done cut this finger. Ooh, it's looking mm, nasty. Don't show blood. No. Sorry. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. So with my handy wire strippers, actually, <laughs> I digress. So when you're using these guys, quick splice wire connectors, uh, I used them a lot in my military days. Uh, basically, all you, you don't have to strip the wire. The reason we strip these little wires over here is because I couldn't tell the positive from the negative. So we're gonna grab the positive first, which is attached to the red in this case. This ain't on, is it? I don't want a 12 volt love connection. So this is the splice connector. And what I do is I put the positive from the light in there um, from the fixture, sorry, and the positive from the light in this end. But the tab is out right now, as you can see. And if you push it in with a pair of pliers, very carefully, the tab goes all the way in. And when it's in, it actually bites the wire. And now there's a, an electrical connection made because the tab, tab is metal. If these little tabs they close and click shut. And I do the same thing again. I try for the wire not to stick out, especially if you have metal exposed. Uh, you don't want any metal outside this device. So make sure the wire is in there. It's kind of a tricky thing, believe it or not, to push this tab in and not bend it out of shape. I always give it a tug. Not too strong, but not too weak either. Make sure that it grabbed. And then before I do anything, I make sure I test these lights. And the light switch happens to be right here. And we just went from 20 watts to roughly seven, seven. seven watts. One additional step that I take when I use these little quick clips is I put some electrical tape around the clip itself, only because we're in an RV. If we were in a house, I really wouldn't do this. But when we're, since we're in an RV and the RV rattles and rolls and shakes, uh, I'm always afraid of things coming loose. And so I just basically, right around the clip, I put the electrical tape. Ta-da! I certainly left out more than I put in. So if there's any questions that you have regarding the meters, the splices, reading 12 volt DC systems in an RV, changing the lights. In the description below, I put up all the stuff that I used. I also put in a little chart to give you an idea how lumens translates to old school wattage and in the organization that governs the whole lumens thing. So that's kind of interesting to me. We're gonna go ahead and rewire the rest of the ceiling lights and we'll give you an after picture of that. But hopefully you get the gist of what it takes to replace uh, LED lights in an RV. Because even if you have LED lights, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can benefit from more low wattage LED lights that put out the same amount of light or better. Since this rig is nine years old, uh, the LED technology back then used higher wattage for lower illumination. So changing all these lights gives us more lights and uses less electricity. So since we plan to boondock a lot and just have a bigger adventure, it really served us well. Again, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And even though I don't say it a lot, 
If you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe. It'll really help us out in getting Google to notice us a little more. <laughs> so, yeah, until next time. What? I, can you spray me so I can go outside and won't get bit? Oh, bug spray. Don't like <laughs> bugs. Is that your way of asking permission to go outside? <laughs> Please. Well, Papa, Daddy, and Tio Cabo are working right now. <laughs> you are too cute, you know that.